Hello everybody and welcome back to our series The Wave of Learning. Today's lesson deals with chemistry. Specifically, we'll talk about salinity and its role in the functioning of marine ecosystems. We will answer some common questions. Why the sea is salty and which factors determine the salinity of marine waters? Before the lesson starts, let me remind you of our TP page. Clicking on the link in the description and following some simple steps, as you can see right now, you can easily make a donation to support our work and help us produce superior content. Our tippers are beginning to grow, so thank you so much for believing in our project. Once again, don't miss the red button under the video. Click on it to subscribe to our YouTube channel and on the bell to keep up to date with our new videos. Alright, here we go! Obviously, everybody knows that seawater is salty. It must have happened to everyone to accidentally swallow some seawater and after that, feel your mouth and your throat burning. Otherwise, just open your eyes underwater and feel as they itch a lot. In marine science, salinity is defined as the measure of the concentration of salts dissolved in seawater. Let's take a brief step back to understand what the salt effectively is. It is an ionic compound consisting of the positive ion of a base, called cation, and the negative ion of an acid, called anion. An ion, you say? Yes, meaning an atom of a group of atoms, positively or negatively charged, depending on its numbers of protons or electrons. But let's not get too deep into these issues, as not to get confused. Simply know that in nature, different types of salt exist based on the element, not only the sodium chloride, the common table salt. Other frequent ions are sulfate, magnesium, calcium, potassium. But where do these salts come from? Their origin is mainly attributable to the weathering of rocks, occurring throughout several geological eras. The mechanical action of waves degrades rocks, making salts dissolve into the water. Even precipitations and the consequent leaching of land mass with the help of rivers, provides seawaters with an intake of salt. Additionally, underwater volcanoes and hydrothermal vents, which consist of emissions of heated water from fissures of the seafloor, release many salts into the oceans. Lastly, an important source of salts comes from the carcasses of dead animals deteriorating in the water. All these events concur to define the salinity of oceans and seas. Salinity is usually measured as grams of salt per kilogram, expressed in parts per thousand. Freshwater has a salinity lower than 0.5 parts per thousand. Blackish water possesses a value between 0.5 and 30 parts per thousand. And finally seawater from 30 parts per thousand. The average salinity of seawater is about 35 parts per thousand. This parameter is usually stable and not subject to large fluctuations. However, there are many areas where salinity can vary significantly, depending on a series of factors. The presence of rivers discharge, whether the sea is closed or semi-closed and consequently subject to frequent evaporation phenomena, and even the presence of currents. The Mediterranean Sea, for example, where evaporation is higher than rivers discharges, the salinity is about 38 parts per thousand. We can find a similar situation in the Red Sea, where the salinity has a value of 42 parts per thousand. An extreme case is represented by the Dead Sea, a salty lake situated between Jordan, Israel and West Bank. The high evaporation of its waters and the lack of tributaries make it the saltiest basin in the world, with a salinity of 240 parts per thousand. For this reason, there is no underwater life except for some microorganisms. On the other hand, cold waters tend to have a lower salinity, around 34 parts per thousand. But this value changes in polar oceans. The solidification of water in ice causes a release of salt in the water and a consequent increase in salinity. Finally, when there is a significant intake of river waters, the salinity decreases as we can see in the Black Sea, which reaches a value of 18 parts per thousand. Even the Baltic Sea possesses a great number of tributaries, 
and its salinity is around 8 parts per thousand. Death also affects the salinity of marine waters. Salty waters have a higher density, so they tend to sink. Instead, less salty waters stay on the surface. We can notice a transition zone along the vertical profile that separates the two water masses with different salinity, called halocline. Deep waters are obviously less affected by all the phenomena we have just described, which tend to change the salinity of the surface layer. Therefore, salinity of deep water masses will be more constant than the surface. But how can marine animals live in such salty waters? The answer is simple. They have developed particular osmoregulation systems. They can eliminate excess salts in many ways. However, it's a complex topic which will require a lot of time. But don't worry, we will deal with it in one of our next drops episodes. This way, we will give the detailed analysis of this adaptation the time it deserves. All you need to know for now is that marine organisms react differently to salts in the water, and we can distinguish organisms able to tolerate salinity fluctuations, called urealine, and organisms that can live only in specific ranges of salinity, called stenoaline. I promise we'll examine them soon, you won't have to wait for long. Thanks for watching! As usual, if you liked the video, leave a thumbs up, and if you want to help us grow, click on the subscribe button. We truly appreciate your support. Have a nice day and see you next week!